Welcome back to another edition of Gen Sports Corner. We back at you for February 11th, 2023. You know what time it is. Super Bowl Sunday is about to come up tomorrow. Big game. Birds playing the Chiefs out in Arizona. Glendale, Arizona. Super Bowl 57, 630 Eastern Standard Time. 330 Pacific Time, I believe they would be on. It may be 430 at Mountain Time. Don't know. Um, Eagles favored by one and a half points. Hey, man. We, we, we're going into this thing, man. The two number one seeds, it's the first time they've met since the Eagles back in Super Bowl 52 versus the New England Patriots. Patriots were first seed out of the AFC. Eagles were first seed out of the NFC, man. We back at it, you know what I mean? And now you have that Super Bowl, 74 combined points, offense all over the place. And now you have, again, two of the top offenses in the NFL. The Chiefs being number one, and I think the Eagles being ranked two or three. So, you know, the points, the offenses are there. Now we have to look at the matchups, defense, special teams, and see exactly how this thing's going to shake out. So let's go ahead and get into it with the injury report. So as we know, as of today, a lot of guys are going to play tomorrow. The, the Chiefs have a clean injury report. Everybody's off of that thing. Uh, Ladarius Sneed had the concussion two weeks ago, but he's set to play tomorrow and then you have Juju Smith Schuster who couldn't walk after the AFC championship game with the bad knee he's going to be playing they did a miracle job on his knee we'll see how it holds up tomorrow then you have guys like uh Marquez Valdez Scantlin he's off the injury report and there was another uh not McKinnon it's one of the other running backs it might have been McKinnon and it was another um uh, McCole Hartman, he was on there. I think he's off the injury report. So they they have a clean bill of health. The Eagles, on the other other hand, the only person who's still on the report and he's rated as questionable is Britton Covey. So they brought up Greg Ward from the practice squad just in case he's not able to play. And then they bought just bought Sipos off the IR, the punter, in time to play for the Super Bowl. And that's that's actually very big because I think Kern was the guy he had in, in replacement of him really shaky even in the the championship game I think he shanked the punt it wasn't the one that hit the wire he shanked another one so he's been up and down it's great having sit balls back Elaine Johnson even with the torn groin the ductor muscle he he was a full participant on Friday Fonte Maddox as well so everybody came out and looked like they were in pretty good shape Landon Dickerson's going to be in there that's huge for the interior so everybody's pretty much healthy for the Super Bowl. So we're going to get the best of the best, at least as much as they can be at this point in the year. So we have the best of the best. You know, we'll see how Mahomes looks on that ankle. He looked good in the championship game against the Bengals. But I recall when he played in the Super Bowl, I believe two years ago, he looked good in the championship game. But then he came into the Super Bowl and he could not move at all. And those linebackers got after him from Tampa Bay on that defense. So we'll see how the ankle looks going into the Super Bowl. But I'm going to judge judge this breakdown regardless of whether I think he's hurt or not. So that being said, everybody healthy. Let's go ahead and, and look at the matchups. Look at the stats here. So in the year, obviously, we know Pat Mahomes just got the nod for the NFL MVP. 5,250 passing yards, 105.2 passer rating, 41 touchdowns, 12 picks, only got sacked 26 times. On fire, man. Fire season. And then you look at Jalen Hurts for the Eagles, who arguably, if he didn't get injured, probably would have and should have been the MVP. Similar to the way that Carson Wentz probably would have been an MVP in 2017 during the Super Bowl year if he had not gotten hurt. So Jalen Hurts, 3,700 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, only six picks. Really protected the ball very well. 101.6 passer rating. And on top of that, uh, ran for 760 yards compared to, I think, Mahomes ran for about 400 maybe. And Mahomes had four or five touchdowns on the ground, whereas Jalen Hurts had 13. <laughs> he had 13 touchdowns to that 22. Now, all of a sudden, it looks a lot different. 35 total touchdowns with only six picks. I mean, that's a hell of a year, man. And, it, and the impact he had for the running back crew, Isaac Pacheco, I mean, he had a really good year for the Chiefs, 830 yards as a rookie, almost five yards a clip, five touchdowns, cool, not, nothing too crazy compared to Miles Sanders, who notched a 
yard season and throw another 69 yards on there for good measure. Again, 4.9 yards per clip. 11 of them big things. Touchdowns, man. Nine big runs. You know, you're talking about runs over 20 yards. So that run game was crazy. Kenneth Gainwell, 240 yards, four and a half a clip. He got four touchdowns. Boston Scott's got another three. So that Philly run game is something serious. Between them and the 49ers who we just defeated, you know, that's going to be a hell of a three-headed monster to deal with. And then in that receiving core, the Chiefs, you got Travis Kelsey, future Hall of Famer. I think he locked, notched in about 1,300 plus yards through the air. He's, he's been a monster this year. Best tight end in, in football compared to Dallas Goddard, who might be, there's a tier below him, but he's clearly the next best guy, I believe. Dallas Goddard, he uh, 702 yards and, you know, 11, uh, how many touchdowns? Three touchdowns. But very, very big mismatch in the red zone. And then, obviously, the killer duel of Swole Batman and Skinny Batman and Fast Batman as the, the third next trio of Quez Watkins. A.J. Brown, 1,500 yards almost, 11 touchdowns. Uh, Schmitty, he had almost 1,200 yards, 7 touchdowns. Quez Watkins, he had some games where he was injured, but that deep threat, man, that speed is something serious. So that receiving core... You know what I mean? There's some separation there between them and the Chiefs. Chiefs outside of Kelsey. And then defensively, you look at the Chiefs. Uh, solid defense. Uh, decent and pretty good in the run, run game defensively on the surface level. But we'll get into the numbers. And then they actually had a really good secondary. They, In terms of efficiency. However, they gave up the most touchdowns through the air in the NFL. With 33 compared to the Eagles gave up about 20 two touchdowns to the air, 21-22. So they were, they were dead last in touchdowns given up. And you, you know that you're either getting killed in the red zone or you're giving up big plays. Either way, it's not good. So there's obviously separation there with their secondary compared to the Eagles secondary, which is the exact opposite, the best in football, with the best tandem at cornerback in football. Right? So there's some discrepancies between the two defenses for sure. And special teams are pretty even in, in what they do. So let's go ahead and look at the keys to victory. Now. We got a sense of what these two teams are like. So let's go ahead and get into the keys for victory. So number one on my list here is look to the trenches. NFL football, doesn't matter what you do, what quarter it is, Whoever wins the battle of the trenches more than likely is going to set the tone for the game and also win the game. So you got this Chiefs offense, which is stout in the middle. The center, Chase Sneed, and then the two guards, really, really good. They do a great job of protecting Pat Mahomes in, in the passing game. And then the left tackle, Smith, pretty, pretty solid as well in pass protection. But then that right tackle, that right tackle, and his name is Andrew Wiley, one of the worst tackles in football. So that's going to be a key matchup there against this ferocious Philippe pass rush. You have three pass rushers with 10 plus sacks. You have Josh Sweat, you have Hassan Reddick, who had the second most sacks in football. And then you have Randy Graham, who had 11 sacks this year. And then throw Fletcher Cox in there, just throw another seven in there, right? And you had Javon Hargraves, who had over 10 sacks. So that is really really going to be the matchup there the interior defensive lineman Javon Hargraves and Fletcher Cox against that trio of linemen for the Chiefs in the, in the interior and then on the outsides you have Fletcher you have Hassan Reddick versus Andrew Wiley which is a mismatch that we have to take advantage of and then you have Josh Sweat versus their best tackle on the, on the end but even so might still be advantage Smith you're getting those one-on-ones with the defensive ends I like that look all right, and then on the other side of things, the Eagles versus Clark in the middle, right? Clark, you know, 15 and a half sacks, best defensive tackle in football, and he's disrupted from both the pass and the run game. Going against Jason Kelsey, who is second or third best center in the league behind uh, Sneed for the Chiefs. Then you have Sam Malu at guard, and then Landon Dickerson at the other guard spot, two of uh, two top guards in football, right? So it's going to be uh, Clark, not Clark, um, Chris Jones 
against those three. And I, I like those odds there. And then on the outside, you have Jordan Malata, who has been a great offensive lineman, but not great in pass protection. However, who's, who's he going against? Clark? Okay, we'll, we'll take that. And then Lane Johnson, even with a torn adductor muscle, best, not right tackle, best tackle in football. Okay, between him and Trent Williams from, from the 49ers. Best tackle in football. In everything. Run block and pass block, he's phenomenal, man. So, I like, I give the advantage to our O-line over their D-line. And I give our D-line a very slight advantage over their O-line because of the matches on the outside. So I like us in the trenches there. Now moving to the next thing, we have to go ahead and look at pass rush. Before I do, do that, you know, for this live stream, I want to give you all a shout out for coming in here. What's going on, Joy? What's going on, Charlotte? Thank you all for tuning in. You know, we're we giving the breakdowns and the reasons why we think this game is going to play out the way it's supposed to play out. So the first one was we looked at the trenches, the O-line, the D-lines for both teams. And next, we're looking at the pass rush, okay, particularly the Eagles. Because you're looking at Mahomes, who's having one of the best seasons in football. Uh, he's he's really been phenomenal this year. However, a somewhat gimpy ankle, even if you're as close to healthy as you can be, along with the tackle spots where you're going to have mismatches and one-on-ones because they're going to have to double Javon Hargrave in the middle. So, you're going to have one-on-ones with Reddick, with Wiley. Are you going to bring in a running back to chip? Are you going to bring in keep Kelsey in the chip? You're going to have to do some different things, right? So if that pass rush is able to put any type of pressure on Mahomes, it doesn't have to be sacks. You just got to get in his face and affect the timing, the rhythm, uh, playing discipline within your lanes, right? Versus the Chiefs pass rush, how are they really going to get a pass rush outside of Chris Jones? Especially if we can double him with a guard named Kelsey. It's going to be a rough game for for that D-line trying to get pressure on Jalen Hurts. Who, with that sprained AC joint, the more time you get to sit back for two weeks and let it somewhat rest, he's going to be in a better spot to make some of the throws maybe he couldn't have made accurately in the previous two games, right? So is that pass rush going to get home? I don't... I'm not highly confident in the Chiefs' ability to get home consistently. And when Jalen Hurts doesn't break the pocket, he has uh, the fewest pressures in the league. He doesn't get pressured behind that elite O-line. All right? So that second, that pass rush, I see our pass rush getting to Mahomes more than I see their pass rush getting to us. Another advantage for the Eagles. And then third, and lastly, would be the schemes. Okay? What schemes does each offense like to do and how does the respective defense try to counteract them? All right. So one of the strengths for the Eagles is in the pass rush and then the symbiotic relationship between the secondary, right? Because that pass rush gets there so quick that it allows the cornerbacks in the secondary to be aggressive. We can jump around here, jump around there, maybe take one back to the house. And that's why, that's how you see those big plays happen. But then also, let's look at the weakness of the Eagles' defense. And people will say the run game, but after that commander's loss, they went out and got Sue and Nival Joseph. They tightened up that run game, and it have been a much better run defense in the second half. Nothing great or anything to write home about, but they're not getting gashed like they were before, right? Going up against a, a team in the Chiefs that doesn't necessarily run that well, but they do when they want to. Well, they don't run often, they, they, but they run well when they want to. It's with the running backs out of the backfield, right? And as good as the Eagles have been, the one area of weakness you can really find is they have trouble covering running backs out of the backfield. We saw a little bit of it last week with McCaffrey when he got the Texas route over the middle before he had that big run. You know what I mean? Like, we haven't been the best in coverage there. And they, in the Chiefs, they like doing that. They like using uh, all of the space from the field to throw in the flat to Jared McKinnon or Isaac Pacheco. And they'll try to play a spread offense. Have have Kelsey going over the middle, stressing the offense vertically, and then the running backs coming out of the backfield, stressing the defense horizontally. So we're going to have to really tighten up on that. And I think that's where KC will have some success 
not just moving down the field, but in particular, keeping drives alive by being able to hit three yards here, or five yards here to a running back, right? We're going to have to really be able to have more wins than losses in that department on defense, right? And then you, you look at the flip side, the Chiefs defense, right? Oh, or, or the Eagles, before I go to that, the Eagles defense, we play a lot of uh, man coverage, but we're also going to a quarters coverage. You play a lot of quarters coverage. We have all four defensive backs dropping into deep zones. The two outside cornerbacks, they drop into deep blue zones. And the two safeties, they cover the inside quarters of the field and drop into their respective deep blue zones, right? So the Eagles will do this from time to time. And where you'll have issues with that or cover three is you'll have teams to attack that with a deep crossing route. So you have these safeties dropping out and then you have a tight end running over the zone over the middle and where my finger's at you'll be sitting in this, a zone in this space and you'll ha- be able to have some success uh, against those type of coverages so you have to look at the film see where teams have gotten you with that and try to patch that up because we got hit with that a couple games this year uh the, the giants were able to hit it hit, hit us with one of those uh this year as well I can't remember the other team it wasn't the Raiders somebody else but we've been we we don't give up much to the tight end but we do give up plays if we do over the middle of the field all right so you're gonna have to lock that up make sure that you're able to be disciplined more often than not on those plays all right and then looking at the other side of the field the chief defense they don't they're not anything special against the run they're they're pretty solid Pass defense, they don't rush that well outside of Chris Jones, but they have really good coverage on the back end. They've given up a lot of touchdowns. However, they personified the bend but don't break defense. They'll allow you, allow you to get down the field, and you, you'll get some scores on them here and there, but you're going to work for it. So I, I would imagine many of those touchdowns out of the 33 came in the red zone. But they typically have been pretty solid over the years, especially with Darius Sneed. He's been very solid for them. And then you had the rookie, rookie Jalen Watson, who's been pretty solid for them in coverage. Right? They're not exceptional, but they're solid. And then you have not Eric Reed, Justin Reed, I think, at safety, who's been playing solid. Nothing great, but solid. Right? So that's why the secondary has been pretty efficient. They have a similar pass coverage grade as the Eagles do for coverage. Uh, according to Pro Football Focus's stats. However, they still, there's still a lot to be desired there. And now you're having a matchup against Schmitty on one side and A.J. Brown on the other side. I really like our odds there. Uh, especially Schnee, he's coming off of a back injury and he's coming off the concussion he had two weeks ago. And so back-to-back injuries, and now you have to go up against A.J. Brown after having to deal with those receivers for the Bengals, who actually did pretty well that that day, even with the turnovers. They still put up a lot of yards, had a lot of big plays. You're going to go up kind of gimpy against A.J. Brown. I like that matchup. You know what I mean? These are the little things that matter here. So uh, advantage for the Eagles in the matchup there when we're talking about schemes, because you have the Eagles, they like to really press you with that, that zone read and that uh, run pass option. They, they love running that play option, run play option. And you look at how the Chiefs have been dealing with this, dealing with it this year. You have two fast linebackers in the middle. You have two fast ones in the middle. Uh, Nick Bolton, and he's had the second highest run grade on that defense against RPO looks um, at 73.4 per uh, PFF, pro football focus. But Willie Gay, who's the other starting linebacker, he has the second lowest mark on the team at 54.3. And then even worse, the rookie air rush, rusher, uh, Karloff, Karloftis, George Karloftis, he also has the worst grade as on the team for a defender against the RPOs. And that's you going into the strength of the Eagles with the RPOs. You're not going to know what to, how, you, they're going to have to be very disciplined. Because if you follow Miles Sanders, now Jalen's keeping it. If Jalen don't keep it, now he's hitting A.J. Brown or Mr. Dallas Goddard himself over the middle, especially in the seam, to kill you. So if you're undisciplined, out of out of position, they're going they're going to punish you. 
So this is where I think the Eagles have one of the biggest advantages because we look at the defensive coordinator, you should, all should know him if you're an Eagles fan, Steve Spagnuolo, who was under the great, late great Jim Johnson, rest his soul, uh, during those great years early on under Andy Reid, with Troy Vincent and, and Bobby Taylor and, and Dawkins and all them boys, right? So everywhere he's gone, whether it be the Giants during that first Super Bowl run, or even with the Rams when he had that team very good with a good defense, or going back to Andy Reid where he's really gotten guys that were average players to be able to play very well because he's good, putting them in good position, being aggressive, really being a student of the game and the film. So he gonna coach, he's going to coach them up, and all these guys do, but there's only so much you can say versus what you can do, right? And everybody... It's almost, almost like boxing. You look at guys on film like, hey, I can do that. But then when you get into the ring or going to the, the, the boxing gym for a sparring session and you see the punches flying at you, they're coming a lot faster from that guy throwing the punches than you perceive them to be from the outside looking in. So it's like you can try to put these guys in position, but once you have to deal with that run, uh, run pass option with the, the level of athletes we have here, it's going to be a whole different ball game. So I think that's a, another big area of separation in addition to us having a huge advantage in the trenches. All right. So so those are the, those are the matchups there, right? So you look at a couple of key ones. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, I'm talking to you, guy, uh, against Travis Kelsey. We're going to have to call on him be able to be able to match up with the, the future Hall of Famer there because – you're going to have to be able to watch him go over the middle and not let Travis Kelsey wreck your game. Uh, second one would be Hassan Reddick versus Andrew Wiley, the right tackle for the uh, the Chiefs. Because Wiley, he's not good. They're going to have to help him in more ways than one. I don't know how much they're going to have to compromise their scheme to do so. They get the chip in with a running back, just one less guy going out earlier on in the play. If you have to chip them with Kelsey, which I don't think they're going to do, now you're bringing another weapon off, which is your main one. So, that's the other matchup. Uh, Chris Jones for the Chiefs of D-Tackle versus Jason Kelsey and, and Isaac Say, Malu, and Landon Dickerson. He, look, Chris Jones is going to get his at times. He's going to be able to get pressure. It's just limit those times. Okay? And then... Um, you have the ability to double team him and do different things. So um, that's a slight slight advantage to Chris Jones on that one. And then Watson, the, the wide receiving court, Darius Sneed versus A.J. Brown. I, I like the, the odds for A.J. Brown. Um, the other cornerback, I can't remember his name, uh, versus Schmitty on the left side. Advantage Schmitty. And then... Watson in the middle versus Watson. Watson versus Watson. I like Watson is pretty good, right? Okay, that's the other guy. So if he has to move in the middle to cover uh, Quez Watkins, Watson versus Watkins. If he has to cover Quez, then that that third cornerback who's not really that good, is he going to match up outside with A.J. Brown or, or Smitty? See, you got a lot of ways to really put them in the bind, especially if you come, if you come out an 11 personnel and had three wide receivers in the field and a fourth one in Goddard, right? Sometimes he split out as, as a slot receiver. So, I mean, advantage for us there. So, overall, I think that Pat Mahomes, he's going to do what he does. He's going to get his. You know that. Doesn't get his can mean five touchdowns or get his could mean one to two touchdowns and a lot of pressures and maybe a few sacks and possibly one or more turnovers. That's that's what we want there, okay? He's gonna he might get his one or two touchdowns, but you want to force incompletions, turnovers, bad field position, which I believe this pass rush can do for the Eagles. Because you have you have multiple waves. You can keep rotating guys into the lineup and, and continue to apply pressure to a line that may be a little flimsy. All right, so with those things in mind, I think that the Chiefs have a lot. They're going to get their plays off, but the Eagles are going to be able to control clock and really grind them down both in the trenches on the offense and the defense and with that mental pressure as well. 
getting three points here, three points there, maybe a touchdown there, and continuing to continuing to stack those points consistently. Do, when you face a, a team that's a really three good three point uh, shooting team, and that's all they do, sometimes they kill you with the threes, and sometimes when they go cold, they really go cold. And then you know in your mind, okay, I can I can keep myself in this game, I can get back in this. Versus a team that's just like the the San Antonio Spurs of the of the nineties and two thousands, you know, the, just fundamentals. They ain't going to score threes all the time. Two, two, two. Too, and they don't stop. They keep building that pressure. Those are the teams and the players you don't like. You don't like facing. So, I think we'll be able to apply that constant pressure to them, and um, be able to keep control of this game ultimately until the the clock strikes zero. So, my prediction is Eagles thirty four to thirty. Um, I think maybe a, a touchdown may come at the end for the Chiefs. So it might be thirty to twenty three, and then the Chiefs try to make a push at the end and just can't do it. But that's the way I see it. I see this, the Eagles winning by about four points. I don't think that it can possibly be a blowout if the run game keeps going and they can't stop us. But I think the Chiefs are, are they've been here before. Okay. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. What do you think is going to happen? And what are your picks? All right. Um, enjoy the game. I will. I'm going to be. Watching this uh, real antsy, being out there in Philly, and um, especially if they win like I think they will, it's going to be wild out there. So, you know, be safe, enjoy the game, whether you're an Eagles or Chiefs fan, and hey, what will be, will be. Catch you on the next one, man. Go Birds, baby.